Okay, Done. thanks everyone. Um, so I've used TALIS actually in assessment um, for 10% of the assessment in one of my modules. If you go to the next slide. So the module is called Communication Skills for Conservation or hashtag com for comms. We do the 10 days of Twitter um, on it as well, hence that. The history of it is that it, um, it was developed by Nancy Harrison and Toby Carter. And I took it over four years ago. Um, and the, do you want to go to the next slide, Matt? Mm -hmm. The main take home kind of message and key goal of this whole module is to, you know, enhance the importance of communication. So communicating to a variety of audiences, you can't make um, conservation, you know, you can't achieve success without being able to communicate to policymakers, to politicians, government, um, to general public. You need a combination of top down and bottom up action. So it's all about explaining things in a simple way that everyone can understand. Um, next slide. So it's a master's module. We get about 30, we've had 45, we get usually around the 30 mark, that's our kind of numbers. Um, this used to be an online only module years ago when Toby and Nancy ran it, but because of visa reasons, they had to have it as face to face. But obviously, with COVID, it went back to being um, an online module. Um, it used to be much smaller numbers. They used to get a maximum of 10 students on this master's module. I'd love to deal with those sort of numbers. That'd be quite nice. Um, but it changed quite a lot. It's a mixture of lectures, discuss discussions, um, a lot of group work and group tasks, because you have to work collabor collaboratively in conservation, obviously, uh, and a mixture of um, online and, and live sessions. And we used to use discussion boards on Canvas, which is our um, online learning um, environment. I'm going to switch to Talos. Do you want to go to the next slide? So it's assessed, they've got two assignments. Um, each of them is basically the same kind of structure. The first bit is a report for policymakers or for government. And the second is a piece for the general public. It's quite fun to mark, actually. You get all sorts of things from poems, sculptures, children's books. You get videos. It's quite, quite a good module to, to mark. Um, the third part is engagement. Now, this is the bit that, you know, could be quite difficult. If you go to the next slide. This is just an example of one of the assignments. So the first assignment is on plastic pollution, for example. So they have to do, they have to um, communicate to a parliamentary audience and then to a general public, and then they have to be assessed on their engagement. Next slide. Sorry. So it's all right. Where are you? Uh, I'm trying to skip to the next slide, and now I'm having tech issues. <laughs> Hang on one second. There you go. Yeah. So as I said, when you've got ten students, you can assess their engagement. Um, we use Nandi et al. 2009. They, she has a, um, they, they gave a, a kind of guideline of how you can assess meaningful engagement. So not just sort of saying, yes, I agree, or kind of, you know, making sort of inane comments, but actually the quality of that engagement. And that's just how we, we used to do it. I used to have to nitpick through all the different comments that they'd said on discussion boards and try to tally, you know, tally them up and kind of work out who's saying what. And in live discussions and, you know, face-to-face um, -face discussions, trying to remember who said what, and that, that's quite difficult, and it's not really, it's a little bit, you know, kind of estimating. So this got really challenging when we had more than 30 students, but luckily, next slide. Oh, there you go. Tell us, tell us Elevate um, came to the rescue and made this task a lot easier. So next slide, that was just a quick kind of Segway. Yep. So we had, I used a range of discussion resources and the brilliant thing about TELUS obviously is that you can put anything on there. So we used, you know, all sorts of different things, um, images, videos, reports, um, scientific papers, etc. Do you want to go to the next slide? So for example, we used scientific papers, so getting them to just to um, discuss different conservation um, papers and things like that. Some of these were related to their assessment, some of them weren't. Next slide. We had reports, getting them to nitpick through and find loopholes in environmental law. These sorts of things are difficult. They're, you know, they're 300 page documents. So doing this collaboratively is really important because doing it on your own, I think, I, mean, I think you'd give up, um, particularly if you haven't got the experience with it. Next slide. And then we had videos as well. So a range of different videos about different conservation sort of issues. So it was a really nice mixture. And every single week they got, you know, at least two, sometimes mostly two, two different discussion resources, and they had to kind of comment on them, and they knew that they were going to be assessed. Talus was used as 10% of the assessment, so relatively low stakes at, at this stage, but still 
it, you know, if something's assessed, it forces them to engage. Next slide. So how about was the kind of response for 23 resources and 28 users? We had 1600 interactions. 770 of these were just likes. So I didn't, I didn't use the likes um, in my actual, um, you know, tallying up their, their grade. There were 882 genuine comments, and these could either be new comments, someone starting a new topic, or a reply. I didn't actually differentiate between these. Um, for some of the resources, the ones linked to assessment, to be honest, nine, more than 90% of the students engaged with these resources. Um, and as I said, it was it was used to make up 10% of the grade. The way I used it in assessment, Matt sent me the the Excel sheet with all of the comments, and then I tallied up and did um, you know I, I ranked them. So the, the top users got the full 10 marks and so on. It went down the list as, as they went along. Some people didn't engage at all, so obviously they got zero. Next slide. You can see how it's varied kind of the number of interactions over time. There was a couple of, um, in week seven, I didn't put up any discussion resources because their assignment was due. So that's why there's a big drop then. Next slide. So if you have a look at the number of interactions, I was interested to see what kind of resource was popular. Um, I compared the papers, reports and videos initially, but actually this is confounded because the reports are linked directly to the assessment. So if you take that out and if you just compare the papers to the videos, then there was a significant difference. Um, you know, they engaged more with papers than they did with videos. So there's some type of resources that they're engaging with more. That surprised me because I thought videos would, would be more popular. Um, next slide. When when the um, reports, for example, or when the discussion resource was linked directly to assessment, there were more interactions. That kind of makes sense if you think about it, really. Anything linked to assessment, they're going to engage with more. Next slide. They also spent more time. So sometimes if you looked at a particular student, you'd realise that they made a lot of comments, but they spent hardly any time, not enough time to even watch a three minute video. You know, they spent a few seconds. So you, it's important to also look at how much time was spent. Um, so obviously they're spending more time anything that's linked to assessment. Next slide. You're on uh, so yeah, how did this link? Yeah, I'll just be a second. So how did this link to engagement? Well, we had a significant um, correlation between their their actual overall mark and their how much they engaged. So what their ranking was in engagement. You kind of expect that. We always talk about how more engaged students achieve better. There's a little bit of proof here. It's not a super strong uh, R squared, but you know. It's a positive correlation nonetheless. Next slide. So overall, engagement is linked to achievement in Conficoms. Um, I think TALIS offers a really nice way to quantify engagement without pulling your hair out too much. Um, but there's still a challenge with that quality aspect because there could be a student talking complete nonsense and, but making a lot of comments. So you still have to go through and see what those comments are. And you can do that relatively easily. Um, if you've got a cohort of 150, it might get a bit difficult, but that's the kind of challenge that still remains. Thanks, Matt. That's me. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Danny. Um, and I, the, the topic around assessing um, sort of collaborative annotation tasks is something that a lot of people are talking about at the moment. So great, you know, great example there of, um, of how you do it. Now, what are you, you going to do differently next year? I think I, I want to set it up a bit more quantitatively because I'd like to try to see what this link is between um, engagement and achievement a bit more clearly. So I think I'm going to set up to have, you know, different types of resources, a bit more balanced kind of design and use the students as an experiment just to see, you know, what are they really engaging with? Um, I think that's one thing that, that I'll do. And I'll probably make it clearer to them at the start how they're being assessed. And I didn't particularly introduce them to tell us um, they were talking about what was that thing? Um, Onboarding. When you introduce oh, onboarding, I'd never heard that term before. I hadn't really onboarded them that much, but it's, it's quite easy to use. So I might do an onboarding session at the start as well because it is linked to um, assessment. So I think it's probably quite important to do that. There's there's a lot of um, one of the things I pulled up in your your presentation there was around um, the, the, the um, engagement between video and text um, and the fact that there was obviously quite a big difference and. I've been discussing this with some other members of the community, um, and th th there is a perception that this year there has been a change from various student cohorts, where you know the the, the interaction with video content has has shifted, um, for, and you know a number of different hypotheses on why that is. But it sounds like there could yeah. be some 
bit of scholarship around that actually. Um, you know, yeah, I find that quite interesting. I would like to set it up so we can test the, you know, test that statistically. It'd be quite nice because um, I really expected videos to be more popular. But yeah, likewise. No, likewise. Um, oh, there we go. In fact, I'm seeing in the chat there's a couple of people who have said, who have said the same thing. So it feels like we might have a, a bit of a research right. project. Oh, cool. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Matt.